Hello, welcome to episode six. It's the end of week seven, can you believe? Now, you might notice I've dug out my RAF jacket. This was purchased about 15 years ago at a V Festival from a, an army surplus store. Uh, it was tight then, so it's uh, exceptionally snug now. I've got it on, I don't know if I'll be able to get it off. But of course, I'm wearing it for a reason. Today, the 8th of May, is VE Day, the 75th anniversary. Uh, and we'll talk more about the work that you've done and our little celebration video that we've got coming right at the very end. Uh, hopefully you've you've had a good week and you've sent in lots of pictures and videos and we'll have a look at them right now. We'll start with your pictures. Once again, Alana's been very busy, a good mixture of activities from her signs. There's a little video of that uh, activity at the top, I'll show you that at, uh, in a minute. And then very impressed with all the home baking. Much the same for Anya, she's been doing her baking and her work. Looks to be tucking into a burger there and then spending a bit of time cuddling the dog. And then she's had a day of making um, fork biscuits. Never heard of fork biscuits before, but there we are. That's how to make them and they look splendid. And Eddie and Alex sure would have been busy creating some wonderful artwork, doing the history research on World War II, as indeed of Scarlett and Leela. That's very neat. Amazing quality there, girls. Well done. I'm sure you're going to decorate the house with all those wonderful creations today. I do always like to see Thomas. He's always smiling, always happy, always busy. A very talented young man. Here he is, testing his investigation skills, playing Cluedo. There have been baking. He's put a Punch and Judy show on for the baby. Made a card and designed a t-shirt for Captain Tom Moore's birthday. Gardening and then practised his uh, competition entry with some wacky hairstyles. Brilliant work, Thomas. Lily's had great fun exercising and she's uh, been discovering the iron statues that are knocking around the woods in Kimberworth. That's something we've done as a science day before. Looks to have been good fun and Lil is uh, actually doing a, a little impression of each statue. Very good job that Lil, good to see it. Mrs Hart very kindly sent us these pictures. There's Abby being very practical outside and then doing his homework. Thomas showing off his skills there on his scooter. Looks like Joseph's been doing some uh, research on London. Looking at all the very famous landmarks and you never know when all this virus has gone away we'll be able to go on day trips and weekends away like that again soon. And Matt getting down and dirty with his uh, artwork. Looks to be great fun and creating a bit of a gallery on the back door there. That's really good. Now if the magician work falls through then Matilda might just become a doctor because as you can see here she's been learning how to dismantle and put back together all the various parts of a human body. Not at all squeamish, well done. And then Nico's been getting out and about and he's come back home and he documented his findings in this wonderful research and very, very well presented. Well done to you, Nico. And there's a new addition to the Elfley Radford household. Here's Daisy proudly showing off. This is Buddy. And he'll be taking up a permanent place in their home in the next three weeks. And, and hopefully for years to come, you'll have the most adoring companion uh, that you've ever known, Daisy. It'll be your little shadow. Here's Alex again from F1. A very talented young man. The activities never seem to stop. And a little imprint of their hands, which I'm sure that their mum will cherish forever. And then I wasn't feeling hungry until I saw Alex preparing this most amazing pizza. Look at this. Rolling out the base, preparing the toppings, and then <laughs> chucking in and enjoying it. Well done to you, Alex. The O'Connors have been very busy with a wide range of activities. It is a little bit non-stop in their house. And then poor, poor Scarlett, she's having to prepare tea. She, she's having to do all the preparation of the meals. But then you see that mum's working in the background on her computer. So it's all hands on deck and uh, everyone helping out to make sure the house runs smoothly. But if you zoom in closely on that computer screen, you, you can see that mum's playing gala bingo. Poor Scarlett. Aurelia's been a very active young lady. Lots and lots of photographs here, whether it's keeping fit, looking after the garden, baking, academic work, decorating the house even. Absolutely brilliant, Aurelia, well done. And then Miss Parkin sent me a summary of some of the photos from Key Stage 1, all proudly showing off their work. I'm looking very happy. Some wonderful writing from Divine. 
And again, some brilliant work on the historical landmarks. And Arthur's looking proud of his house. Not quite sure what's up with Jesse. Doesn't look very happy. Maybe it was something to do with the book he was reading. And Emily's been very active working out in the garden, taking advantage of the good weather, doing lots of research. I think that looks like Miss Davenport on the screen there. A bit of homeschooling, that's good to see. Looking very happy and rightly proud of all the work she's done. Well done, keep it going. Once again, children, it's my sad duty to report that I have been the victim of crime. My property has been stolen once again. And it's this shower, this despicable shower of people that have stolen from me. This is a disgraceful picture, absolutely disgusting for so many reasons. Every single one of those is on a list. And we will ensure that everyone on that list is made accountable for their actions. So much wrong with that picture. Consuming alcohol in school, theft of property. It's not the least bit funny. You may have waited while the children have gone home. You may have felt that you needed to give Mrs. Wattle a bit of a boost. Friday tea time, not with my property. Actually, it was mine and Mr. Swan's, we earned that. It will be replaced, I'm sure. Don't forget you can send work for your class web pages to the key stage addresses, or if you've got fresh content that you want to share with us here at SBTV, send that to the G Sharp at St. Bede's, catholicprimary.co.uk, and we'll feature that next week. Now, it's my firm belief that one day nature will reclaim the earth and the plants and the trees will just take over. Uh, and there's signs of that happening with uh, these little visitors coming into Rotherham now that people are staying at home. And that's because with uh, very little traffic and, and not much human activity, the animals are starting to come and venture into town. Little deer there just making its way down to Bluecoats, where it'll probably find Mr Swan and its family trotting along not far behind. <laughs> Now, Alan has been making some uh, homemade caterpillars with a view of racing them. Uh, here she is taking on her mum, and uh, her mum looks to have uh, the upper hand in this little race. Say then, on your... Little marks, set, go! Oh, mum's doing really well this time, isn't she, look? Yeah! She's keeping a good steady, steady stream. Right over the finish line. Go, go. Hey! Yeah, my butt's here, little mummy! Hey. Now we'll see pictures of this later, but you can see Verity working on her competition entry, and, and good old Archie gets Brother of the Year award. He just sits there and uh, lets her do it. <laughs> what are you turning your brother into? A unicorn! A unicorn! Archie, you're such a good sport, kid. <laughs> And Matilda's been running some uh, homeschooling lessons for her dolls and, and Nico's recreated a very famous scene. Wonderful character acting this, Nico. Well done. Yesterday morning at 2.41am at headquarters, the German High Command and the Heat the head of the German state signed the act of total surrender of all German land, sea and air, and air forces in Europe to the Allies and at the same time to the Soviet High Command. Command. God save the King! I really am at the end of my tether with the hairstyle. I'm going to have to cut my own hair within the next two weeks. Might have to wear a cap next week because it could go very short. Uh, but with that in mind, we had our, our weekly challenge and it was for four coins. And the idea was that you would take a before and an after picture uh, and show us how creative you could be in styling someone's hair or having it done to you. Let's have a look at the pictures as they are. First up we'd got was Callum, a very colourful creative design there, I think with the aid of technology. This does look genuine. I think Thomas has um, actually curled his mum's hair and done a very good job of it. Very stylish. Good old Isabel did some modelling for Harriet to enable her to do these wonderful plaits. 
Olivia managed to incorporate a, a stay home, stay safe message into her mum's hairstyle. Very creative. I, I can see that taking off and becoming a big thing. We saw a little clip earlier, but there's the end result. Verity's uh, unicorn attempt on Archie. Didn't expect there to be a uh, colour involved, but that's that's very, very creative. Well done. Aurelia was struggling for a model to use, so she used technology on herself and very effectively. They look brilliant. The poppy sat beautifully for Daisy. Uh, we didn't just get one, we got three different designs uh, and they all look super spectacular. I'm sure he had a lot of fun doing them. Matilda doesn't look too happy here. Maybe her model wasn't uh, behaving as he should have done. But again, very style. The end result looks really good. I think Archie wanted to get his own back, uh, but he did a, a wonderful job creating this very distinct look for Verity. And just in the nick of time, we've got Anna. I don't know, she's coloured her hair there. It looks darker. And some braid work. And of course me. I'm not quite sure what we'd call that design. I don't quite think Cooper knew what was going off. Anyway, and my entry wasn't included. Don't worry about that. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't sent off. But uh, I did send everybody else's off to my uh, niece, Heather. And she looked through them all as a, a, a lot more qualified than I am. Uh, and this is the message she sent back. Thank you all for your lovely entries. This is a winner for me. I like it because it looks like a unicorn and it's like the NHS colours. So well done to you. It puts you in joint second place on the leaderboard of the gold coin. Uh, I hope you all had great fun doing it. They were absolutely brilliant to look at. And you never know when, we, when the lockdown is eased and we all start going back out again, maybe you might want to go out in those wonderful hairstyle creations that you've made. Well done, really good. So to this week's challenge then, with it being an extra special day today, with it being 75th anniversary of VE Day, what better subject matter could we have than for you to draw Her Majesty the Queen? Probably the most photographed woman on the entire planet. If you don't have access to the internet, just find a one pence piece or any coin for that matter and she'll be on there. A remarkable woman who has provided remarkable service and stability to this country and will spearhead really the celebrations that will take place up and down the land today so the task is simple draw create do whatever uh, create something ideally a picture that you can photograph and send in of her majesty queen elizabeth ii and because this is such a special day i will make this worth six gold coins so if you're a new entry that will put you right at the top of the leaderboard I know how creative you can be. I know how artistic you are. Put those two together uh, and let's see your wonderful artwork of Her Majesty. All a bit quiet on the long haul. I haven't seen much evidence of books yet. I'm getting a little bit worried that perhaps maybe no one's even writing a book. If, you, if you're on with one, perhaps just drop me a line and let me know. Uh, we could start to include your book covers in draft format on these bookshelves, so at least we know what's been worked on. And remember what we said about year six? It might be the longer this week's gone on, and certainly into next week, we'll probably get more and more information about when we can possibly go back to school. Year six, it's looking like you'll be the first back. So that might really give us a good opportunity uh, to get really, really creative and put on a year end production. Uh, maybe a, 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 it's a video this year or, or, or whatever. But we need to think about what would we like to do. By now, we'd have probably purchased a script and already been working on the part. So let's not let that slide. Keep thinking, what would you like to put on as a year end show come July? <music> Now, a lot of the artwork this week has all been around the VE Day celebrations today. I think you've been working hard all week and you've come up with some absolutely sensational work. Ola's created this remarkable work and a bit of Lego sculpting too. And we saw a little glimpse of this earlier, but Joseph's uh, done quite a lot of work on the London landmarks. Very busy in the O'Connor household, non-stop. I guess it has to be if Mum's always on the bingo. And here they are making uh, some bunting. Looks like Dame Edna in the background on the telly. A lot of time and effort gone into that. It's going to look really, really effective when it's done. And here it is. I'm sure that will be proudly displayed in the O'Connor household today. 
Paige Beasley has created this near life-size model of a Spitfire. That's really good. I wonder if it can fly. And Matilda hasn't just created her world. She got dressed up in character to create, recreate all her wonderful artwork and bunting and everything else. And many of those designs, I am led to believe this by Mr. Freeman, featured yesterday on the News Byte site from ITN, which is found on Discovery Education. Well done to all those children whose work was featured on uh, the TV. Brilliant. And then with a minute to go before the deadline, Mrs. Kane sent these pictures through that she'd received from your parents, some of the work you've been doing, some marvellous research from Caleb, Harriet learning about the ancient Greeks, Bella and Beth getting out in the sunshine, that's very important, made the most of that good weather. Tom and Jack have been taking inspiration from Jamie Oliver, a wonderful bit of home baking there and some very artistic work. Owen very into his science, documenting and, and, and labelling all his work. Lily May has been building robots and writing stories. And Lily has been carrying on her academic work. Just have Lucy and Emily creating some wonderful poppy pictures. Master how it's been, I had recognised the design of that aeroplane, I think we've made a few of those in our time, Finn. A bit of flag making there, I'm sure the Howitt household will be decorated with those today. And Betty and Mac have been very, very busy creating their VE Day posters to help celebrate today. Now, we've had a few birthdays recently. Last Saturday, uh, Evan Rooney turned 11 years of age. Happy birthday to you, Evan. I hope you had a great day. Believe it or not, what's happening to you at the moment? Being locked in the Colin Campbell. That's that's Mr. Beaumont's idea of heaven. Having your birthday locked in there for seven, eight, nine weeks. I think one or two others would enjoy it as well. Lily is turning eight and that's today. Happy birthday, Lily. Hope you have a great day. I'm sure your family have got lots planned for you. Uh, a virtual party and lots to eat and drink and, and, and just generally celebrate. Have a great day. And if there's any spare cake, anything like that, you, you drop it in. All donations greatly received. A couple of our members of staff have also had birthdays. Now, we never reveal the age of a lady. Uh, but what we will say is happy birthday to Miss Dowell. Here she is with wee Florence uh, celebrating her day. The house is all trimmed up and looking wonderful. And as I say, we don't mention the age of ladies, um, but Mrs. Williams, she was 62, believe it or not. And starting to show it by the looks of her there, ageing rapidly. And Mrs. Williams has her birthday on a, a, a very special day. It's the um, Star Wars Day, the 4th of May. May the 4th be with you. It's funny that really, because uh, Mrs. Williams does remind me of a... A Star Wars character, a very particular Star Wars character, probably the the, the biggest one there is really, uh, is C-3PO because he never stops talking either, does he? Now, staff challenge time. This is normally the part where we play you the two clips of the very energetic, very committed members of staff who uh, have accepted the challenge and sent the video in. However, we have to remember this week it was Mrs. Williams and Mr. Swan, and we have received nothing. No attempts, no footage to prove that they had a go. Uh, it's just been nothing. So I'm really sorry, Apony. Your task, although it was brilliant, uh, it hasn't been done. So I'm really, really sorry about that. We've all been let down by Mrs. Williams, by Mr. Swan. Um, what more can you say? It's a big red cross for them and that will stay, I'm afraid. I'm, I'm supposed to be led to believe that Mrs. Williams had 50 goes at the chocolate down the face. I doubt it. Probably just had 50 bits of chocolate knowing Mrs. Williams. So that's a real disappointment. Nothing we can do about it, uh, but there we go. Now, I'm sure we can put this right with the next two nominations. Uh, these two will be up for it and we'll get it done very, very quickly. Uh, let's have a look. Where was it? So the first one is for Mrs. Howitt. Mrs. Howitt's a very good singer. She just like to sing. She might be able to get a bit of support from the family. She might want to do it while bouncing up and down on the trampoline. She'll be creative with the presentation of this, I'm sure. But it was really good, uh, this suggestion. It was quite simple. It was, can Mrs Howitt please sing the French national anthem 
in French. Easy. It's a wonderful voice. I do like to hear Mrs. Howard sing. It reminds me a little bit of Maria Callas. Um, only a little bit. Look forward to seeing that. That would be really good. The next nominee uh, is Miss Long. And, and again, this is quite easy, this one. But I, I do quite like the idea because it might inspire you to do some of your own. The idea here is can Miss Long recreate herself in a famous piece of art? What a good idea. I, I wasn't quite sure what was meant, but I had a little look online and I found these. And these are some really good ideas and inspiration. Some really professional ones there. We'll leave it up to you, Miss Long, which piece of art you pick. It's entirely up to you. Try and keep it decent, I'm sure. But we'll look forward to seeing them. It's, they're, the, they're the two challenges for next week. French National Anthem and an amazing piece of artwork featuring the very talented Miss Long. Now you keep sending your suggestions in and your email ideas and we'll get them on the screen. Now there's plenty of online help for children if you need to contact someone or get emergency help. But there is also help um, provided by our friends at the CLC specifically for parents. And if you search rotherhampower.co.uk, that will take you to their very comprehensive website. Because I don't know, maybe you think TikTok is something a grandfather clock does or Instagram is an instant measurement of weight. Um, you might need help with all these online weird and wonderful things that your children are probably investigating more than ever or been very, very active on. Uh, some of them... Well, they all have an age restriction on, and it's for a reason. Um, but if you genuinely don't know what these things are, then there is help and advice in a very easy to read format. And it's well worth a look if you are perhaps struggling as a parent or grandparent uh, with all this modern day technology and general guff. A couple of things that are well worth having a look at this week uh, are NASA. Every week they put out amazing stuff. They always did this before the lockdown, uh, but they're doing it more and more now with lots of home study packs and things. And they published this recently about things that will be happening in the skies and not to be missed in the month of May. From meteor showers to full moons or near misses or, or all sorts of things. Comet Swan. I'm not quite sure what that is, but if it's anything like the swans we know, it'll be well worth a look. Forestry England are also really stepping up the pace with what they're offering online. Uh, there's some wonderful resources. Lots of us are going out and probably doing more and more walking than we've ever done before. Uh, so these are like activity packs and little science experiments that you can do along the way. It's well worth a look. Check them out at Forestry England. Mrs Wassell kindly gave us this little uh, reminder. Gulliver's will be opening soon at uh, Rother Valley. And they're producing a, a, a new cartoon series. And you can name that series. By suggesting a name, you get entered into a prize draw. And you could win an annual pass as well as credits on the actual programme. So that's very, very good and well worth a look. So we love going to Young Voices every year. And it's well worth checking out and getting involved in this particular little project that they've got going. They want you to be part of the world's largest choir, but from home. Uh, you do need to register this and you, you'll have to go either to the Young Voices website or track them down on Twitter or, or YouTube or something like that to get a little bit more information. But they are going to sing that uh, that special song that they always like to do, The Power In Me. It's going to be a special home performance. David Lawrence and his American equivalent have prepared a little video to tell you a little bit more about it. You can find that on, on YouTube and Twitter and, and places like that. Uh, but it's just a, a tiny little summary at the end. Here they both are. I'll, uh, I'll play that right now. It's going to be on Tuesday the 2nd of June at half past two 
We'll be linking up with singers from around the world and a huge group from America. But you do need to go online and register. So maybe get on with that today if you are a Young Voices fan. A little bit further down that form, there is a, a you have to put whether you're new or existing. St. Bede's is a, a long standing existing school. Okay, so it's quiz time. Get your pens and paper ready. This is about who is first. So you have to be first, but you have to get them all right. So if 50 people have a go before you, but they all get one wrong, they're out. It's about, can you get 10 out of 10 and be the first person to do that? Uh, we don't seem to be getting many, getting all, all of them right. Maybe we ought to look at the questions again, I don't know. Uh, let's start by having a look at the answers from last time. And here they are. Question one, the capital of America is Washington, D.C. The actor in his younger days was Daniel Radcliffe. That was part of the logo of Starbucks. It was Itchy from The Simpsons. Mercury is the nearest planet to the sun. Question six, it was the flag of Albania. Question seven was Mrs. Osborne. Number 95 is on the side of Lightning McQueen. A group of lines is called a pride. And this caught a few out. The first number you get to containing the letter A is 101. Four people entered and the first one through was Matilda at eight minutes to 11. She slipped up on question 10 and, and did leave a blank. Alfie was next. He also slipped up on number 10 and thought it was Mrs. Smith. Archie correctly identified Mrs. Osborne, but he also put 1,000. Callum also said Mrs. Smith and 1,000. And Alana also couldn't correctly identify Mrs. Osborne, so she slipped up as well. So no one again won the quiz. So even with those children having a go, and very well done for having a go, you were so close. I'm not quite sure who Mrs. Smith is. It's kind of worrying how quickly you've forgotten. I would have thought everybody would have remembered Mrs. Osborne forever. Um, anyway, it's a double rollover. That means this week's is worth three coins. Three gold coins. Someone, someone's got to win these, surely. Get your pens ready, get your paper ready. Here we go. It's time for this week's quiz. Question one. This is the flag of which country? Who is this former British Prime Minister? What is the name of this character for question three? On a standard dartboard, what's the highest score you can hit with nine darts? Question five, what was Starburst Sweets originally called? Question six, who is this chart-topping sensation in her younger days? Question seven, who is this former member of St. Bede's staff? In which state in America would you find Mount Rushmore? Question nine, what's the name of this ride at Alton Towers? Question 10, often the tricky one. What is the number of the occupied parking bay? Remember, it's the first to submit all 10 answers and in the quickest time. But in order to win the gold coins, you have to get them all right. As I won one last time and it's a double rollover, there's no change to the leaderboard. And as and when you've got all 10 answers, you've checked them and you've double checked them, then send them in to me at gsharp at stbeatscatholicprimary.co.uk. And I think we'll keep this open for at least a couple of days. We'll close it tomorrow on Saturday. So there we are, there, there, there's the 10. Um, surely someone's got to win this week. So quite a lot, we'll be back to normal next week. Uh, we'll have all of Wednesday to get your content in. Thank you for sending things a little bit early. It really helps if you don't duplicate things. Uh, unique content to St. Bede's TV really does help. Uh, and the sooner you can get it, rather than close to the deadline, uh, it just makes life so, so, so much easier. Uh, so thank you. Please keep sharing. We don't have a show if you don't send anything in. So um, get involved. Remember the competitions this week, the Majesty of the Queen, everything else. Uh, look at your class websites for ideas and inspiration. Maybe, maybe we'll be getting back to school, some of us, very soon. Remember, you can send everything to these email addresses and the unique content to me here at St. Beats TV. Okay, so change of scenery. Maybe you're decorating your house a little bit like this today with red, white and blue. Parties organised, celebrations, sing-alongs, whatever it happens to be. Because today is VE Day, 75th anniversary. Um, it was the start of a return to normal life after a horrible, horrible episode in our history. Uh, we've marked it by doing a song, We'll Meet Again, very apt for the time. And I would just like to thank everybody who's taken uh, a role in this and taken part. 
it's come together to be probably one of the most special things, one of the most special creative things we've ever done as a school. I absolutely love it and I'm sure that you will too. And a special thanks to those who stepped in at last minute because uh, one or two didn't actually get round to being able to do in their recording. So we had some uh, some very helpful friends of the school who saved the day. Thank you to you. Now, I think when I uh, when Mrs Hart suggested this, I did have a, a vision for it and I could hear it in my mind and I thought it was going to be very, very professional. Uh, edited well, you know, beautifully presented. Uh, but then I, as the videos came in, I began to realise that, um, hang on a minute, we're using different cameras, there was different sound. We can't all sing for a start. Uh, there's some very good singers. Let me let me say uh, the, the whole family, for example, very very good singer, very talented family, carried most notably by Andrew, the father of the house. I think it's all the years of singing on the Liverpool Cup that have given his voice that wonderful resonance. Uh, so some really good singers. But, but then we've got like Mrs. Handley, um, and you'll see what I mean when you hear it. But she had a go. Uh, we can't all sing. It wasn't about that. But what I, I, I have spent hours and hours and hours on this, and I've, I sort of slowed people down and 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 sort of sped people up a little bit to make sure that all the words matched the music. And I really have spent a long time on it. But then I was altering the way that people sounded. You know, some sounded like they were half asleep, and others sounded like chipmunks and things like that. So I, I, I did balance it, but it, it didn't sound right and didn't look right so i've just left the clips as they are whether it's mrs howitt lunging for the camera at the moment she's finished mrs gallagher just walks off she just says the line and walks away but it doesn't matter about the <laughs> waiting for the next line again i've had to just leave all those things in uh and actually it's those imperfections that make it perfect i, I really do honestly i love it um I think it's superb. So I'm going to stop babbling on. I'm going to play it. I want to thank everybody once again uh, for being involved with it. It is super special. I'll, I'll put it separately on social media after this so that hopefully we can generate a little bit of media interest as well in it because it really does deserve some credit for all the hard work and effort that people have gone to. Well done. Thank you. Have a great seven days. I'll see you next week. And then never know, one day we'll meet again. Here we go. We'll meet again.
Look, sit down.